Hello, everyone. Today we are talking about slides, just like the drive video. This video is going to be more of a walkthrough of slides itself. If you would prefer just to watch uh, or check out the presentation on your own and get through the assignment that way, you are more than welcome. Um, but this video will cover all of the same information as the presentation. So from the Google homepage, we are going to use the waffle. If you can't find what you're looking for. Remember, you can always Google what you need. And in this case, we are looking for the yellow page with the folded corner slides. I am just going to open a blank slide. We are going to start from scratch. So remember, the first thing that you want to do is name your presentation because you never want to lose what you're working on in a sea of untitled work. Remember, the format is class assignment name um, and then the name of the assignment that you'll ultimately be turning in is a uh, boredom assignment um, and then you need your initials and what i forgot yesterday was um, middle initial so make sure you're using all three initials and the reason for that is we're going to have a lot of students sharing the same first to last initial so adding the middle initial will make it easier for us to find your work in the future if we need to the first thing you might want to do is add a theme or a background. Darwin. Shelly dogs. Hi, good boy. One thing you'll need to do is add a theme or a background. If you can find uh, themes over here to the right, any of these will do. I definitely suggest keeping it simple. Some of these get a little bit busy. Um, I like to keep it simple, keep it neutral. This one seems like it will work. And the reason I like to keep it simple and neutral is you don't want your presentation to distract your audience from the content that you are providing. So the assignment is to convert your boredom paragraph into a brief presentation. So we're going to need to retitle it. You can't use this one, boredom busters or something like that. Bye, Mr. Anderson. Okay, so now we've got our title slide. That looks good. We need to add a new slide and you do that by clicking insert in the menu and coming on down to almost the bottom for a new slide. And notice that it, Google tells you what the keyboard shortcut is. So if you can remember it, control M in a Google Slides presentation will add a new slide for you. Alternatively, a really easy way to add a new slide is just to come up to the top left-hand corner of your window and just hit this plus button. That will add a new slide for you. If you are going to make your own backgrounds for your slides or for your presentations, you're more than welcome to. Another way to accomplish this is to click background right here to, you guessed it, change the background. There's a lot of different options for you in terms of color or even adding a gradient. And I'm a fan of gradient. They're very simple. Experiment with what you like uh, with these. For the purposes of this presentation, I'm going to do this one and call it a day. Notice that you can also choose an image. I do not recommend using an image as a background in a slide. It's very difficult to find an image and a text combination that's easy to read. Readability is going to be the most important part of your presentation. Um, we want to eliminate any distractions whatsoever and images can be a big one. So I'm going to stick with gradient. Although the theme that I selected has a white title. Um, and so we're going to need to fix that because the way the gradient is set up, it's not easy to read. I am going to title this Conquering Boredom. That's the name of the slide. So because this title of the slide is hard to see, I need to change the color of the text. And I don't see where to do that. 
with the options on my toolbar. This is where you are going to be able to make all of the changes by adding shapes, adding text, adding whatever you need. But what we need to do is click on the three dots, the ellipses. This opens up more options for us. And this is especially useful when working with text. And we want to mess with the text color. So it's the A. We're going to click on that and change the color to black. But that didn't work because we didn't have the text selected. So we're going to try that one more time. So remember, your text has to be selected in order to change the color. This font is actually great. It's a uh, large size, size 30. You want to go no less than 18 for sure. And I would say 30 is solid for titles. Um, and it's a, a sans serif font. And let me just tell you what I mean very quickly about sans serif. Here we go. This is a good example of a serif font. Serifs just refer to these little fancy flicks that are attached to letters. So when you write a B or a D or an R, you don't write it out with these tails, right, on the, on the bottoms and coming off the lines. Those are referred to as serifs. And sans is, and sans just means without. So sans serif fonts are fonts without the tails coming off the sides and the lines. And the reason that's really important for a slides presentation is sans serif fonts are way easier to read from a distance. Comic sans is not allowed. It's a meme font and it will not be tolerated. But the reason you see it all the time in presentations and documents is because it's a sans serif font that's really easy to read. But there are way better ones out there that we will use. Uh, I'm just going to stick with Fredoka one. Notice no tails coming off the lines or sides. So that is going to work for us. Some helpful rules for slides. I like the five by five rule and the rule of thirds. The rule of thirds I will start with just to give us a visual representation of what I'm talking about. Rule of thirds just means splitting your screen into thirds vertically and horizontally. I'm going to leave these lines on the slide just as we design our slide, just to give us a visual cue of what we're looking for here. But as you design your slide, think about how you can fill thirds. For whatever reason, millions and millions of dollars have been spent on marketing research about what catches the eye and what holds a person's interest. And what marketing gurus have decided is that the rule of thirds is the way to go. And so the rule of thirds is already giving me some cues about how I can improve the design of my slide. Um, I could actually make this huge and I'm going to make my title dominate this corner of the presentation. So this top third is devoted to the title and these two boxes are where it's going to live, which means I need to move the text box out of that top third because that top third belongs to the title. Okay, I'm going to come back to the rule of thirds as we start to add more text and pictures, but the next thing we need to think about as we're developing a slide is the five by five rule. And all that means is aim for no more than five lines per slide with five words per line. That's a benchmark. Maybe you'll need to add a couple of words in one line, take a couple words out of another line. That's totally fine. It's not a hard and fast rule, more of a guideline, but definitely stick as close to that as you can. If you're turning in a slide with a paragraph written on the slide itself, you're not using slides as they were intended. Remember, this is a visual presentation format. People don't want to read a paragraph in a visual presentation. So we need to add bullets. We add bullets with the 
bullet button and I don't see it on the toolbar here. So that's not helpful. We're gonna have to go back to the more category. There they are, we want bullets. So I'm gonna click on bullets. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna give you the example. Um, I'm just gonna kind of make this up, but I actually wanna know how you conquered boredom this summer. Um, I am going to say the things that I did. I learned all about city planning. This is completely unreadable, which means I need to change the font or I'm going to make it as readable as possible. This looks like a serif font. So I'm going to choose a different one, Calibri. Calibri is the most normal sans serif font. It's the kind of thing that you might expect to see in an email or an essay or something like that. Um, you'll notice that a lot of the other sans serif fonts are totally bizarre, like permanent marker here. Don't use permanent marker. The whole idea is for it to be readable. So if you're going with a sans serif font, make sure it is a readable one. And then, you know, five by five, I'm going to increase the font because I'm, I don't have a lot to write. I just want some cues. So I learned all about city planning. I researched civil engineering, practiced project management, and I was even the leader of a city of my own, led an entire city. Okay, let's see how I did five by five. One, two, three, four, five. Perfect, one, two, three. That's cool, one, two, three. Great, one, two, three, four, five, six. <sighs> no, I'm just kidding, it's fine. Not a big deal. Again, five by five is more of a guideline, not a hard and fast rule. So. Needless to say, this summer, I spent a lot of time playing City Skylines. But let me show you how to add an image because that is something that we're going to ask you to do. So find an image that you like online. I am a fan of pexels.com, P-E-X-E-L-S.com. It's a website full of free stock photos. And a lot of them are pretty cool. So if you're scrolling through Google images and it just doesn't have something as classy as you need or whatever, come check out pexels.com. Maybe you'll find something there. So I am going to search for cityscape. Um, okay, yes, some of these might even work. Let's go with this one. When you have found an image that you like, go ahead and two finger click on it and just copy the image. This is the easiest way to do it as far as I'm concerned. Uh, once your image is copied, head back over to your presentation and then double click again and paste or use the shortcuts. Control C is copy, Control V is paste and that will add the item that you copied. This is huge. This is the rule of one mega thing, not the rule of thirds. So I'm going to need to resize it. Uh, the second image is better. So let's get rid of this one. This looks like it will fit in nicely into this corner right here. Okay, here's a pro tip for you. Anytime you have an image, I highly recommend adding a border. So borders can be added up here. Uh, here's the border color. You can change the border weight or the thickness of it. I like a black border and I don't want to make it too big, just enough to kind of get it to pop off the page a little bit. I don't know what it is about borders, but they are super classy and add a lot of pep to your presentations. In the assignment, we're going to ask you to do a couple of extra things just to show that you can. Um, one thing that we'll ask you to do is add a shape and change the color. So I'm going to show you how to do that now. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make, uh, put a box around my main text. That's not what I want. I want the color to be close to what I already have. That works, but now I can't see my text, so that's not good. So I'm going to double click. Sometimes I, I need to double click right on the line to pull up this menu. I'm going to come down here to order and I'm going to send the box all the way to the back. 
Um, this changes what things show up first. So by sending this to the back, the text shows up over the top of the box. And you can make all of those changes also in the text box itself. Treat the text box as a shape. You can change the border. You can change the fill color of the text box. So just as an example, if I wanted to change my title text box color to super dark unreadable gray, totally an option, although I don't recommend it. So I'm going to keep it transparent. Okay, there's only two things that we need left. We need to add a link and a transition. Let's do the transition first. I will be totally honest. I am not a huge fan of transitions. I find them to be distracting usually. Um, but if you ever need to add one, you click on this transition item on the menu here and you just select the one that you want. Uh, we are going, here we go. We're going to do some Star Wars stuff here. They're always doing these wipe transitions. Uh, and then it's, they're always kind of like weirdly slow, uh, but not that slow. So maybe just like a half a second transition is all we need. And I am just going to apply to all. Uh, all right, let's see what that looks like. I am going to present this slide. It's going to preview the transition for me. I'm going to see everything in its immense glory. Oh yeah, that's some George Lucas action right there. That's great. So you can either hit the escape key to get out of your presentation mode, or you can move your mouse around and hit exit when the menu pops up. So now we've got a transition. The last thing that we need to add is a link. So what I'm going to do for my link is I'm going to insert a new text box. I want it to go down here because this is kind of my unused third skylines. Um, I forgot what kind of font we had up here. Calibri, excellent. I'm going to want to keep that consistent. So this is going to be Calibri also. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so that people can see it. I want to look for a Cities Skylines video on YouTube. I will copy and paste this link. So I need to select the link. Control C is copy. You can always two finger click it and hit copy there. Head back to my presentation. I've got this text selected. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the little chain link icon right here. It says insert link. The text that will show up is cities skylines. It's the text that I typed, but it's going to send you to this web address that I'm going to paste into this, this box right here. And once I apply, what I have done is I have created a link from text so that when we're in the presentation, people can just click the city skylines word right here and it'll take them to that YouTube video that we found. I'm just going to make some last minute adjustments here. So that's it. I'm going to call it a day on that slide. I'm happy with the result. I have everything that I need in the assignment, but as you can see, there are tons of additional features that slides has. It's maybe not as bad as a competitor to PowerPoint as I thought. Uh, I still happen to prefer PowerPoint, but slides is not that bad once you figure out how to make it work. So it's just a matter of learning the new tool. Um, as speaking of learning the new tool, in the slideshow presentation on this assignment that you are currently on, there is a slide at the end that gives you a couple extra tutorials on slides. So you can click these links embedded in the slide and they will take you to additional tutorials. Okay, that's it, you're done. Go ahead and take the quiz, do the assignment, move on to the next thing. And as always, let me know if you have any questions. Good luck.